there is this whole ecosystem when you look at it for electric mobility has to be created so whether it you look at it from a electronic standpoint you look at it from a bms standpoint you look at it from charging infrastructure to be created or you look at it even from the uh, technology the it the iot etc so all of these sectors and more are going to actually get created because of electric mobility coming in mining for that matter is going to be a sub sector of this or is going to be a outlier sector which will also get uh, further boosted because of this because you will have to mine all these materials that we are using for electric mobility yeah, mr anil shivastav also with us and uh, uh, anil ji we were just summarizing the discussions which we have had so far we will start with you on the potential impact of ev market growth on economy and it will be great if you will take a systems view where after i will come to the industry leaders hi anil ji good afternoon afternoon everybody hi uh, uh, sir vastav ji how are you i am i'm good and it's a very nice seeing the familiar faces and after a little bit of uh, break uh, yes wonderful and uh, i would love to be talking to you each one of you individually and uh, and uh, inquiring about as uh, to what is happening in your area and what is happening in the ev which is my passion absolutely so, yeah anil ji happy happy to connect talk to you usually yeah yeah uh, so uh, uh, mr choudhry you want me to start with the, the discussion as to the... yes a uh, systems view Uh, of the potential impact of ev market growth on the economy and uh, give us a broad picture of various sub sectors which may be affected as you mentioned in our uh, uh, last discussion it's not only mobility but environment uh, various parts of industry so it has a wide uh, range of impact uh, let us uh, let us uh, through your uh, start Uh, have that uh, broad picture formed, and then I will uh, go to the industry uh, leaders. So, friends, I did a uh, when you talk about the impact, uh, we did a study in uh, Niti Aayog, and I was heading uh, that time the DG of the Development Monitoring and Evaluation Office. So, when we talk about the impact, we try to analyze the impact of uh, all the government policy, central, centrally sponsored, and central sector schemes. which had a budget of uh, nearly 10 lakh crores and it had 843 schemes at that point of time i'm talking of the budget of 17 18 and we did that exercise so what is what is an impact impact it starts from the inputs inputs uh, is in the ev if you look at it i mean you can always draw a parallel input is the money which you feed in or the policies or the uh, announcement in like then there are some activities the, by the stakeholders there are some outputs output is the the number of evs which are manufactured then there are outcomes and then finally is the impact now what uh, show what would be the impact i'm just trying to draw in the chronology from uh, the analysis or the exercise which we did at that point of time as to how do we arrive at the impact now what is what is the impact that uh, we want and what is going to be the impact the entire ev uh, uh, thought process is started with primarily three uh, wish lists of uh, the government number one is the 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 import uh, budget now nearly 87 billion dollars uh, annually uh, the considerations on the environment or the pollution uh, pollution considerations and uh, uh, what is the third one is that and the third one is the, that is make in india what is the value addition uh, uh, in terms of the indian economy and uh, how india could lead, reach to the world leaders uh, position now what this is this is the this is probably is the impact which uh, uh, the government and maybe most of the stakeholders would like to have and obviously the consumer who is at the center stage would like to have a means of mobility which is uh, better than uh, in terms of the finances in terms of the cost in terms of the all other parameters better than the current uh, uh, current mobility options available uh, with him now it is uh, it is very difficult to say as to 
uh, what uh, would be the impact of the EV market growth on the on the economy or anything? And we just cannot discuss it in isolation. And that is a probably a lot of research, a lot of studies, and a whole lot of exercise goes into. For example, if I ask you that, what is the impact of uh, uh, mobile phone on uh, on the economy, or what is the impact of a smartphone on the economy? Then maybe I mean one can one can simply measure that so much of the manpower, so much of the employment, so much of the addition to the GDP, and so much is. But then there is much, 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 much more than that. A smartphone has enriched the rural areas, the common cities, and even me myself, and, and all of you, in such a way that it is very difficult to measure the impact. So, friends, my point, as uh, Pawan was mentioning just now, uh, the discussion which we had uh, earlier, is that. Uh, uh, you cannot, we cannot uh, measure the impact or uh, try to analyze the impact in uh, keeping our keeping our boundaries limited. And what are the boundaries is also probably it's very not an easy task to imagine that what are going to be the boundaries and what are really the boundaries. So some of the uh, factors which come to my mind is that well, environment of course uh, the impact of uh, EV market growth on the on the environment then uh, on the employment. And uh, yes, uh, another issue related to the environment is its impact on the health. Now, suppose uh, there is a lesser number of uh, uh, part particulate matter in the in the in the air, then certainly its impact is on the on the health. And then uh, there is a direct impact as, in terms of the GDP, which is the which is the economic uh, growth, and uh, how much does it contribute to the uh, GDP? Then again, the kind of last mile connectivity which is now provided. Because of the electrical vehicles, whether they are three wheelers or the uh, two wheeler Yulus or uh, whatever uh, is there, so those kind of last mile and uh, connectivity, then its impact on the goods movement, the freight, and a whole lot of things. So these are the five, six different points which come to my mind as to how the impact could be assessed in terms of the growth of the EV market uh, uh, in on the economy and what could be the potential impact of the. Uh, growth of the EV, EV market. So this is what is there, and a uh, few more important, uh, very important uh, uh, factors which come to my mind is that we cannot ignore uh, the transformation and the disruption which is uh, taking place because of the growth of the EV market. Now this the disruption is uh, not measurable, but it is playing role in the attitudes of the people, in the in the thinking of the people, mindset of the people and helping India grow or rather our country grow, probably uh, taking a, uh, not in a linear way, but rather taking a leapfrog uh, from the current position to, uh, to the more advanced and more uh, make in India kind of a situation. And the biggest example of that is the, the growth of the startups, the number of companies which have started coming into the uh, electric vehicle uh, domain and those who have uh, started making it so they are going to make a huge impact on the uh, on the indian economy in, in totality in some, something similar to what was probably happening not to that scale and right now not to that extent that uh, that of the software technology and likewise and also the uh, we cannot uh, cannot ignore the relationship with the ev growth is having with the energy storage systems because the, the energy storage is uh, linked. Whatever is happening in the batteries of the electric vehicle is also the energy storage systems and then the, the, the connectivity, the redundancy of the grid, storage of the energy generation, the solar power, and then charging of the electric vehicles with the cleaner energy. So there are so many interlinked things, Pamanji, ki aapko ye, this is very difficult to say. Ki bhai jo hai, hum ekdam se, we can measure the uh, we can really measure the potential impact of the e market growth on the on the economy. So, Pawan, I have tried to give you a very comprehensive and in a totalitarian view. Let's let see what the industry people and my friends have to say in terms of the contribution of EV to the economy. You know, I think Anandji, you have really summarized so beautifully, and uh, uh, the entire system's view of the impact of EV market growth on the economy. Uh, I would also like to compliment the government for really choosing you for this very senior position and finding just the right designation. You were the Director General of Development Monitoring and Evaluation and you have spoken from that wide angle view to, to help us begin this 
talk on uh, this webinar on a very broad note what you have said is fuel saving and import bill was one of the important pieces this is connected with national security there are vulnerabilities in supplies there are embargoes we are seeing the iran embargo which is hitting us like anything and the dollar which goes on the fuel goes out whereas the money which is spent on the electric vehicle most of that will stay in and push the economy further the other point which you have brought about is maintenance saving and you have spoken about social ca cost of carbon emission which is healthcare the respiratory diseases the cardiovascular diseases the diseases in children because their breathing rates are higher you have alluded to all that other costs of social costs of carbon emission is changes in the net agriculture productivity property damage from uh, flood risk and if you go to further then there are also costs of more, uh, greater air conditioning and ev as a grid resource also you have spoken by speaking about energy storage system so you are saying that there will be vehicle to grid transfer eventually and storage of wind and solar energy may become possible in the battery of your vehicle for exchange so beautifully you have brought in this point these points and you have also said that there might be other angles which might not be so visible and one of those i was just thinking as you were speaking quieter operation also may have some socio economic benefit or increased driving performance may have some socio economic benefit you have also spoken about mindsets mindsets of consumers are changing insurance ag agencies are changing insurance agencies eventually in the west already are looking at the electric vehicle consumer as a more evolved consumer and more dependable consumer and are planning to give uh, fa more favorable premia to them so lot of lot of positive impacts i would like to now come to the industry wide experts we have a stellar cast here we have navin munjal who is a pioneer and a real icon in this space in the two wheeler space i would ask him to come in and comment further on what we have discussed so far as well as bring in what sub sectors of the two wheeler industry will subdue and which what sectors will surge navin thank you pavan uh, good afternoon everybody it's a pleasure being here today Uh, you've actually got an outstanding panel here because you've got different people talking of different sectors within the EV uh, sector, and Anilji to open it up, which is always a pleasure to hear him speak. And there's so much of knowledge that one gains because what's I mean he's constantly uh, buzzing about this whole electric mobility and what's happening. So basically, uh, let me come to what's really going to happen in the uh, what sectors are really going to surge. So then this whole ecosystem when you look at it for electric mobility has to be created. so whether it you look at it from a electronic standpoint you look at it from a bms standpoint you look at it from charging infrastructure to be created or you look at it even from the uh, technology the it the iot etc so all of these sectors and more are going to actually get created because of electric mobility coming in mining for that matter is going to be a sub sector of this or is going to be a outlier sector which will also get uh, further boosted because of this because you will have to mine all these materials that we are using for electric mobility so electric vehicles when we look at it it's a myth that what we say with electric mobility is coming in that the other sector or the ic engine sector is going to be either hugely disrupted or anything it's a, the what is happening actually let's look at it with the electric vehicle coming in you're basically changing the whole drive train and the associated components that go with the drive train when you look at electric mobility the needs requirements and the structure of a two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler commercial public transport are very different from each other and all will start or all will move at a different pace when it comes to conversion from a current ic to electric over a period of time when you look at electric mobility and we talk about you know which sectors will negatively get impacted now the transition that's going to happen from ic to electric is going to be over a period of time so there is time 
for companies who are in sectors which are even related to drive trains right now to start looking or start converting into electric or start looking at uh, electric as a more important factor just to give you some examples you know companies who are there in for example forging and aluminum castings etc they could start looking at areas where they could be manufacturing even the motor housings or even composite materials because light weighting is going to be a very very important factor so now going forward at least for two wheelers and some of our other vehicles light weighting is going to be a important factor so going from black steel parts to aluminum parts is going to be a very important uh, uh, shift that happens companies which are even making the powertrain manuf uh, pump manufacturing for example you know they could easily come into motor cooling systems for the batteries when it comes to larger vehicles even companies uh, which are making the electrical components and electrical harnesses etc for them of course you know it's a it's going to be just expansion even companies making fuel tanks for that matter now a fuel tank company could actually move into they are used to making these plastic fuel tanks which are highly flexible and can go into tighter spaces so you could be looking at things like cooling systems again for the cars etc so what's going to happen is there are going to be very few sectors which are going to be hugely negatively impacted and if we have to go back into history and we look at the way you know transitions happened in across multiple sectors moving from landline phones to mobile telephones or from uh, even the normal taxis that we had to now uh, shared mobility or for that matter e-commerce the level of unemployment or the level of disruption is there for a short time but we people are very resilient and especially indians are very good entrepreneurs so they are able to switch quickly but now is the time to start looking at what are the options going forward so though there are going to be sectors which do get negatively impacted but if they start planning now that negative impact could actually be hugely reduced or minimized great points great points navin and uh, it's interesting that you have ended by e-commerce because there are a lot of questions coming and very important questions both on the uh, both on my whatsapp and earlier and now also i'm sure they must be coming so or they haven't started yet but the point which was made by one of the questioner was that um the ice engine may be hit and you have uh, you uh, ice engine industry may be hit of course we want that transition to happen without disrupting jobs and socio economics and e-commerce is an interesting point you brought in because when email came the 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 courier industry became very scared that we will die now however another offspring from the same stable of internet other than email e-commerce gave such a fillip to the courier industry that it is zooming so you are saying that uh, let it completely play out and at the same time make adjustments so that uh, you are uh, so that you can adapt to this changing trend your manufacturing systems by leveraging your strengths Uh, uh which you already have great points uh, uh navin let me come to mahesh babu mahesh babu also as you all know is a thought leader as well as a, uh, a pioneer in this space mahesh what is your take <coughs> sorry on the industry overall what will be the sub sectors of the industry which would submerge and which uh, which would uh, subdue and what which sectors would surge and what is the way to balance out that the potential losers become beneficiaries of this uh, big change which is coming mahesh thank you pawan it's always difficult to speak after anil and navin both of them are very distinguished speakers i want to just uh, shift a little bit towards uh, uh, what's happening in three wheeler and maybe in the fleet four wheelers before i come to four wheeler pa passengers since you said on the impact i want to be on the front end impact then coming to industry and back end impact uh, later because navin has covered a little bit of it so let's say i believe that any technology or any transition which is happening has three elements to it socio economic and environmental impact at the front end uh, let's look at uh, let's say three wheeler industry uh, now what's happening in the environment why ev is bound to disrupt the uh, regular ic engine in three wheeler segment is very clearly 
um, which is environment, which is common for all the sector. It's very clear, even our very re recent research in uh, Australian energy has very clearly said, even if we have a full coal or a full fuel burnt vehicle, the well to wheel uh, emission is going to improve uh, with a BEV. And if India is around 20% uh, uh, renewable energy, that's about 16 to 40% benefit in emissions. Now, everybody says there is a 15 to 40% emission, but nobody puts economic value to it. So let me bring in some numbers which I've read on economic value. The cost of pollution in India, I read this about due to pollution loss is about 7% of GDP, which is about $600 billion a year. We are the third after the US and the China, which uh, US lost about uh, 1.5 uh, trillion and uh, China is about 900 billion. So the, the loss is very huge number and it's about 2x of x of our fiscal, uh, fiscal deficit. And hence, there is a cost for pollution and which needs to be accounted. In, uh, uh, I also read a study that if uh, we are spending about 1000 rupees a person on cost of pollution, government is spending for healthcare. If that is so, 1.3 billion people is almost a uh, uh, trillion rupees uh, spend uh, per year. And uh, if that's going to go by 2021 to 2000, it's going to be like 2.6 trillion rupees government is spending on healthcare uh, for individuals due to pollution. But all of them are not coming from uh, uh, automobiles. I know that, but still this is the spend which we need to account when we talk about subsidy when Anil Ji talks about uh, how much EV uh, he is spending. So this is a very important factor we need to do it. While we talk about all the benefits of environment, it's also important that electric mobility has to become economical at the customer's hand. Customer is not going to buy because of environment. So let's look at uh, three wheelers. Three wheelers, uh, we have already proved enough that a customer can actually earn two to 6,000 rupees, depending upon per kilometer, uh, per day kilometer between 100 to 115 rupees, which makes him economically viable to uh, increase his lifestyle. Uh, so if somebody is buying an electric three-wheeler today uh, with the current fame subsidy and the 5% GST and all that which government has uh, given, which, which, which industry is thankful, uh, somebody is going to earn money. You can see that in adaption in e-commerce, we have sold about close to now 1,000 uh, triozors on the e-commerce platform, which they are finding it economically viable. We have sold about uh, uh, 5,000 autos now. Most of them are three-wheelers, and most of the customers I met are saying they are earning about three to 6,000 rupees a month due to lower operating cost. Now, they are also contributing to the pollution at the bottom of the pyramid, and this makes tremendous satisfaction. Now, the third important element of social impact due to technology on this is I'm seeing a lot of women drivers adapting uh, three-wheelers. Now, this is happening because we are giving a drive-by-wire technology, which is in cars to a three-wheeler industry. So it's like driving a scooter rather than clutch gear and all that, which is a man-dominated industry. So this is going, uh, severely impacting the social impact because the money given to a woman at the bottom of the pyramid is substantially getting into the hands of the family rather than a man. So that lady whom I met, my customer is saying she could now uh, educate the second child she has in the family just by this three to 6,000 rupees earning. And hence, this is creating a huge economic and social impact at the bottom of the pyramid. So this is going to have increase the purchase parity. This is going to increase the education levels of the customers. So I believe this socio-economic and environmental impact, let's say, for example, what I said in three-wheeler is, is can be replicated in other industry. And it's going to create a lot of wealth to the country, uh, which we normally don't account. Uh, on the fleet, similarly, we have seen, uh, of course, with pandemic, we have some challenges in four-wheeler fleet. But very clearly, floor wheeler fleet, we have proved, we have about 250 million kilometers between a fleet of four wheelers and three wheelers. We have clearly proved that it is a very clear economic viable model. People have been talking about technology. My first 100 cars sold in 2013 has covered almost eight years uh, in, in the field and they have run about two lakh kilometers. Uh, and all of their uh, vehicles are still running. It is as good as new. So it is going to create a lot of wealth in the fleet segment or the operators who are running it. Now, what does it does to the other industry? Of course, there is an impact. Now let's look at 
dealership model. The dealership model is becoming unviable due to already high real estate. Now, if you have EVs into place, it's going to create um, uh, create a disruption in that model and where he or she has to work very closely on a different revenue model. It has to be reinvent. So basically, we are tell telling that automobile channel industry needs to reinvent to do what has to be done. Like Naveen has said that the supply chain has to reinvent what it is. But we have seen this everywhere, whether it is solar, whether it is uh, mobile phones or it is anywhere. Each industry has to reinvent for a better. Let's say while we are talking about job losses, there is very clearly a study says 2.3 million jobs are added in new energy and new industry in US. Similarly, India is not counting how much new energy and new technology jobs are getting added. And I'm sure if we count properly, it will be much higher than what it is losing. Uh, so I don't believe that we are losing anything by the transition. I believe that we are recreating, reskilling, and reimagining the future with a socio-economic and environmental impact. That's how I see in both the three-wheeler and four-wheeler adaption. Excellent point, Mahesh. You're right. I have also read several researches which say that the per kilometer emission of an electric vehicle is... Uh, six, uh, about 40% less than that of an ICE engine vehicle. And of course, this also factors in the fact that the life of an ICE engine vehicle is about 300,000 uh, kilometers, whereas the life of, a, of, a, of an electric vehicle, as in your case also you just mentioned, it is 1,600,000 mm. kilometers. It is your vehicles are still running as good as new. And the other great point which you brought in is that the money which we save or the extra money which a person earns, a good part of that, particularly at the lower end of the pyramid, goes into uh, expenditure and that pushes the economy. It is said, if there will be more money which is made by the rich people like the Bill Gates of the world, they cannot offer 500,000 pizzas. But if you will distribute that money, small pockets, uh, small packets of that money among the lower end, they will buy because they, they, need, uh, they, they, they need that money to make sure that their lifestyles are maintained or improved. Great points. And the woman driver point is also a new point uh, that uh, these vehicles are uh, having, um, are more easier to drive. And um, uh, and that also gives uh, give this an interesting uh, uh, interesting uh, point. You you want to say something else, Mahesh? No, no. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, only one point. While I said women drivers, I think uh, when I met some men drivers, I got some interesting point. But uh, you you can't quote me. The the fatigue of uh, the, the men drivers have drastically come down. Somebody in uh, very down south in some of the village said, uh, actually, Mahesh, I take less alcohol because my fatigue is down after my hard day work on a week. So this impacts social. This thinking is different. So actually, fatigue, reduction of fatigue, nobody counts at it at workplace. And it makes a difference. Yep. Absolutely. This is, a, this is also a very important point. And um, great points, Mahesh. Let me just now go to Nishan and ask him, Nishant, so you have heard that Mahesh was saying that EVs will change the automotive value chain. And uh, Naveen also said that, uh, including technology, manufacturing systems, ownership models, distribution, and after sales support. You are an important part of the value chain, not only for EVs, but also for ICE engine vehicles. So how do you see these changes coming in? And the important point, which is standing like an elephant in the room, uh, is how can the, the disruption minimize discomfort to the IC engine manufacturers? Nisha. So first of all, uh, Pavan, uh, I think I agree with all the points uh, mentioned by Shivastavji, Naveen and Mahesh. I think they have mentioned very pertinent points. Just to share some data with you that uh, more than 80% of our population 
today uses uh, public transportation in India. So, in different ways uh, across the country. So, it is extremely important that uh, what they use, they actually don't use that uh, as a compulsion. And that is not a need, but that's a choice they are making. That's first and foremost. Because uh, uh, my view is that always you start from the customer, from the user, and you are not just uh, bringing a product on the road. It's an experience and a solution which you are giving to any end customer, which is most important here. How can you ensure that uh, uh, journey uh, is uh, where you are able to provide a luxury ride like comfort and where you uh, talk about affordability, you talk about uh, zero emission, you talk about safety, and you're clearly ensuring that uh, the person is actually able to consistently use that product over and over again. So for doing that, uh, one really needs to understand that how are you actually working towards it? Because just to give you a small example on the economic side as well, that with every electric bus, you save about 350,000 liters of diesel in its lifetime. So if I just look at uh, 10,000 buses, which is peanuts because India's market is much larger and today we have uh, close to 2 million buses in the country of all kinds. So 10,000 buses with that gives you about uh, 3.5 billion liters of diesel, which can be saved. That is the magnitude we're talking only with 10,000 buses. So we need to clearly realize that what exactly are we working on? What exactly are we providing? Because the asset utilization is one of the highest and consistent in case of electric buses. And that is what uh, FAME and other policies talk about because a maximum number of people use those assets today, as we see across society, across the country, in each and every part for their day-to-day -day movements. So base is that, how are we using technology to drive value? We just don't use technology because it's for the import bill, for the health and environment. How a common man who is forming the largest part of society is able to benefit from that. That is important. And that is where you ensure and see that sustainability is the key. And if anything is for, uh, being developed, sustainability can be scalable. So how sustainability can lead to scalability, that is a very essential point. So I'll just park it there. And then see that how organizations today are really coming up with technologies we heard earlier that... Uh, different technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning. How I would say is that uh, India's ACEs are very different. So instead of autonomous, I would say artificial intelligence connected electric and shared and in different modes, all these would come across. So clearly how uh, new skills are required and we are able to clearly put across that how we need to learn, unlearn and relearn in this case. And that is how a lot of new skills will emerge. And we as a country would really need to engage and work upon that. I think the biggest challenge which we have in India, a lot of companies, many of us here do design, engineer our products, but we are talking about electric vehicles. We are talking about the ecosystem. We are talking about many things and we are talking about make in India. But how, do we see that we design in India and make in India in many cases or still many of these technologies are coming from abroad, even though we are making in India? and making for the world. So that designing, engineering, that product know-how is very important. And that is what would be creating jobs because we need that competence. We have that competence. And today I see there's a big mismatch between the kind of people available and kind of people required for being employable in these areas, which, can, which is getting bridged slowly. And But the requirement is growing much faster than what we need today. So starting from there, building the right product because India has never followed the global trends. India has always made its own path in every segment. So clearly how we are moving towards that and simultaneously, how are we integrating companies like we as OEMs here and ecosystem players, integrating tier ones, tier twos and tier threes in the whole supply chain and ensuring that how they become sustainable. And that would be the foundation of actually a self-reliant country where from top to bottom, starting with skills, starting with technology, starting with manufacturing know-how, and going up to the customer experience, we're able to map all these things. And that is the reason electric vehicle gives a level playing field. Earlier, people used to say that automotive sector is a dominant part of the automotive uh, the manufacturing segment. India has to get to a $1 trillion economy in automotive in manufacturing. And today, automotive contributes about 50%. But they have got inertia from the beginning, from last 40 years, they are growing. 
but in ev it creates a level playing field because being a new technology a lot of new companies are coming startups are coming in and companies from solar sector power sector high voltage railway and many other areas are coming in how we can welcome and really collaborate and co-op in this case basis that a lot of new opportunities are coming up and how we as industry work on those opportunities supply chain disruptions are happening we are clearly seeing that how the logistics costs of different companies are increasing different areas how in our country we are looking at waterways we are looking at railways in addition to other things and infrastructure is contributing towards this so a holistic purview is very important when we are looking at electric vehicles i have tried to touch upon few other areas in addition to what my other yeah. co-panelists talked about and only then along with the right financial ecosystem will we be able to drive this and engaging all kinds of startups msmes larger corporates and global organizations working together i think only then it will happen and yeah. that is most important to create the disruption yeah i think the very beautiful point which you have added is that there was some inertia in the ic engine industry and the electric vehicle industry by rearing its head as a rival here has broken that inertia so there will be greater innovation there will be more nimbleness greater efficiency and our, our perhaps customer responsiveness coming to customers amit uh, what is your take on the discussion so far how are they taking to uh, the change to electric vehicles amit you are a pioneer in the space uh, with you look please go ahead thanks thanks pavan thanks atat pleasure to be here so i think uh, it's like not repeating what everyone has said i'm just thinking what else is left to be said <laughs> but uh, if i have to summarize uh, some of the key points here clearly there's a rise of ecosystem electric mobility is not about an independent company figuring everything on their own but rather they have to collaborate with many other stakeholders which means earlier the value creation which was happening for maybe two or four or five automobile groups that will also get distributed and because we have not too much of time uh, and fighting with global giant and if we don't figure out our own setup very soon then someone else will come uh, what exactly happened in the case of smartphone industry where we had a good lead in terms of domestic market share from an oem perspective but just because we did not innovate on that timely we actually became a trader and hence we lost the game and <clears throat> this is an opportunity for us where there is a large ecosystem and economy being created and thanks to the push from niti aayog and government of india where now we have all 2030 as the goal post where most of our mobility has to become electric and now with substantial focus and budget being given to us and in the form of incentives there is no reason for us to not go with full force so clearly there is a very high need of new as well as traditional oems to understand the power of the ecosystem and they figure out how to collaborate with them very very soon now talking about uh, the shared mobility uh, you know clearly there are some larger theme and if i have to summarize that theme at least at least in the urban mobility uh, world uh, so the tagline that i want to use is small is the new big now small is the new big is actually very very crucial in our country's context let's talk about the space of the road so we all struggle with a lot of traffic congestion answer is clearly not that we can convert all of the four wheelers of car um, into into electric will that solve our congestion problem answer is no we have very very limited road space and that's where you have to create a much smaller form factors to make sure that people are able to use the effective spaces whatever is available to us and move them quickly and that's where not only the passenger mobility there's a lot lot of talks being talked about the last mile and first mile uh, mobility so that they can all use buses metro which are already clean and at least better than personal car and then that can be complemented with services like ulu or someone can use their own personal bicycles and e bikes etc the second point is when you talk about even the logistics space where 
the rise of e-commerce has led to everything coming to your doorsteps. Not only the shopping we do do on Amazon and and Flipkart, but now is a problem with my tap. So I will again press a button and try to get a carpenter or a plumber or a electrician, uh, and this guy will again come to you as the last mile delivery uh, of a service. So movement of people, movement of goods, they all basically becoming very very small in nature, and then we cannot approach. all of this with a traditional mind share gone were the days where you basically can have your own two wheeler and then you can service across the city no you actually need to use buses you need to use metro by the way we have a role model in the form of mumbai where people live very very far but they will come to some pocket in the city where they have an employment opportunity and that's where the big city will be behaving they will have some public transportation but for them to make some livelihood they need a mobility which is shared and and that's where companies like yulu come into picture we are empowering people to earn livelihood we are empowering people to go go to their workplace with dignity without any inconvenience where the traditional mode of whatever we have been using they were either very very inefficient or very very expensive and certainly not convenient for sure and in our case we said that if we have a form factor which is so small which has the lowest footprint in terms of the road space parking space and even the the weight on your pocket where something is so cheap and last but not the least the even the footprint on the environment and that is actually becoming a win win situation for all the parties i would like to actually Uh, uh make an extension to a point which mahesh made on the women empowerment when we were making uh, uh, our own electric vehicle we were very mindful of the women user we realized that even if tvs scooty came honda activa came it's a unisex product but have you ever seen a woman using honda activa how much trouble they have got just in putting them to this on the stand how much offered it is for them to put their both legs on the on the ground when they have to balance the scooter no it is not a scooter for women we are actually kidding ourselves maybe something which we can be proud of is tvs scooty which was i think a very you know which created disruption for the students or a very very old uh, you know product called bajaj sani where that maybe you can say was created for women user and when we look at yulu extending our theme of small is is a big is a new big that product actually created for women where with so much of ease they can handle this 50 kg product uh, you know and then they get zip around they don't have to cause uh, there, there will be no dependence on anyone uh, certainly the cases which we hear they they get inconvenience in the public transportation with respect to their own dignity sometimes their own safety that all things get taken away and they don't have to shell a lot of money and india as a country has also shown the power of small in the form of uh, shampoo small sachet product right it was not cheap but just because it was small one can actually get a world class service because it is available to you in a sachet manner and that's what the whole concept of shared mobility brings on the table where you are paying only for the fractional time and then everyone wins because of the business model uh, where only one asset is being serving close to 25 to 30% in a given month and we are able to reduce the wastage uh, on the road on the parking just unnecessary wastage of the material and things like that and everyone wins in this situation yeah. great points great points amit uh, really fine points and i would like to pick up uh, and elaborate on the uh, on the e-commerce piece you spoke of growth of e-commerce is 200% year on year and post covid there has been a huge spurt in e-commerce platforms from the lower classes and uh, blue circle did a study to find out why disproportionately higher number of people are coming on to uh, uh, on to the e platforms e commerce platforms from the lower classes after, even after the lockdown was opened and they found that these people 
want dignity in shopping. It, that means when they were going to the malls or to the hypermarkets, they were not getting, they were being behaved a uh, little badly or condescendingly by the shopkeeper as well as fellow shoppers. So they prefer not having to dress up, not having to put on their best accent possible so, they are, they are, so that they are accepted in those glitzy malls or hypermarkets even. They want to buy from their homes. So, uh, and the other point which you raised also about women reminds me that when the cycle also came, she was not allowed to cycle. And in fact, uh, the woman was told that if we make any cycles for you, the pedals or both the pedals will be on the same side because you cannot sit on the cycle straddling the cycle because that can cause sexual arous uh, arousal, etc. Those were the things, uh, 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 claims which were made to deny her that. And, but then uh, pioneers like you uh, came out with the trouser for the woman. She was allowed to wear trouser. When she was allowed to wear a trouser, not only she rode the bicycle, the female liberation started that because she, it freed her up. The frock was gone, it freed her up and uh, you are also doing something similar on a different scale in a different time. That's really great, uh, Amit. I come back now to Mr. Anil Srivastav to deepen the dialogue. One of the points which came up, uh, Anilji, yeah. Uh, one of the points which came up was the mining piece. And I would like to bring the other side's argument also uh, so that this uh, audience, informed audience of CXOs who has joined us, uh, listens to both the sides and then uh, can decide which side has a more compelling piece. My, my vote is also towards, clearly towards electric vehicles, but let me bring the other side's argument also. And it is coming to me in uh, questions after questions. So mining will surely also have certain pros and cons, as is extraction of oil. So where does that balance stand in terms of economics, in terms of independence of a nation, sovereignty, and in terms of environment? The second point is, how can we make the innovation more inclusive so that the job losses in the oil industry and gas stations or auto maintenance, maintenance and mechanical world, they are mitigated. Or you feel that those the fears of those job losses are exaggerated. These are the two points I would like you to comment on, an Anilji. Has you, always discussed and your your voice has become faint. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Uh, this argument about uh, mining of uh, oil and the mining of minerals has been raised, and it is also the details are also given in one of the papers published by the DPI. I had uh, authored it. Uh, the issue is that of the quantum. When we compare these two things, we we tend to forget the quantum of uh, mining which is required to take out the crude oil and the quantum of mining which is required to take out the uh, the uh, I mean the nickel cobalt or uh, lithium or uh, all these uh, three or four uh, uh, minerals. The issue is that uh, and then also we do forget about the recycling whereas the recovery rate now is said to be 95 to 97 and even some people are claiming 8% of the recycling of the uh, product. So, and we have so much of the lithium ion or the battery waste that the environment ministry has now added it in, in their scheduled list and it is allowing the uh, recycling. So, we are really comparing uh, the statistics, uh, one statistic with the another statistic that suppose today we have all the internal combustion vehicles are converted to the uh, to the electric vehicles and how much battery is needed, how much uh, uh, how much uh, uh, lithium is needed and how many minerals are needed. And then we compare the whole thing, then only one can arrive at a picture. And uh, 
detailed modeling uh, needs to be done. We try to do a little bit of modeling in that. And uh, there's, there's a clear difference between the quantum and the scales. This, this mining of the crude is required and the refinery is required and the general electricity or the power required, energy required for the uh, for the refineries and all those things. And plus the, the, the energy which is required for a cell manufacturing plant or lithium ion cell manufacturing uh, uh, plant. Now, uh, now, another issue related with that is we often talk about the uh, the contribution of uh, uh, to the economy. So now our imports are say 87 billion uh, uh, billion dollars of the crude import. But then if you look at the impact which the lithium ion uh, cell manufacturing is going to have, then it is much more than if uh, the kind of the gigawatt hours of the battery power or the cells are which are needed even for the Indian context and the globally. So though you you look at the you compare the statistics taking into some facts and cannot make a statement which is not based upon the facts and the statistics and the sheer uh, the data which is realistic. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, please go ahead. Second point is uh, this uh, innovation has to be more uh, uh, inclusive. Yes, you are right. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, none of the innovation is successful unless, unless it is innovative, unless it is inclusive. So yeah. that is that is something which we cannot be ignored. So if somebody is under the impression that he can have a successful innovation which is non-inclusive, then I, I'm, I'm, I, I am fear to say that uh, that will not uh, succeed as an innovation. So that is that is true that uh, there are uh, fears that there would be job losses, and uh, the I mean I mean the government would be the first uh, entity. To recognize that there are 30 million people working directly or indirectly in the internal combustion industry and all down the line on the roadside uh, uh, mechanics and all those things and then how to take uh, care of that but once again i would say what i said in the beginning that we cannot ignore the broader picture we 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 may see that uh, these 30 million people will not be that engaged but once again the size of the internal combustion engine is not going to go down as I've been saying, saying for the last three years. The size, the sheer, the, the, the basic size it, uh, is not going to go down in terms of the internal combustion. It is only the delta which is going to be the electric vehicles and this large portion of this delta would be the electric vehicle and it should be electric vehicle for the consideration which I had elaborated in the beginning. So, friends, uh, the, the innovation has to be inclusive and we cannot ignore the point which you have uh, raised. But let me tell you, whatever is happening in the entire ecosystem in, uh, in association with all the stakeholders is in the interest of the uh, inclusion, uh, inclusion and the sustainable and it is taking care of the, uh, the, the, the welfare of uh, whomsoever you consider among the stakeholders and uh, the, the first among them would be the passengers. Excellent point, Sanerji. You have so beautifully described the economic impact and you have alluded to the independence piece also that it is possible that, uh, I mean, uh, to say that our dependence on oil will be replaced by our dependence on Chinese batteries is a little hyperbole. Why? Because, <clears throat> because oil is, is, is a resource which is concentrated in many areas and uh, if uh, and similarly, uh, the refining as well as the mining as well as the uh, resources of uh, these minerals are available in several countries. And also, we feel that whatever uh, whatever uh, differences may be there between two countries, uh, often they do not uh, culminate into disputes. And even when they become disputes, there are other alternative areas. Uh, of maintaining that supply, as, as well as alternative technologies coming in. The other point regarding uh, inclusive innovation, you are, you are absolutely right, that innovation will succeed only when it is inclusive. And we have examples of the US government and Indian government is also doing similar stuff. Uh, US government, when it phased out CFCs, uh, companies like DuPont, etc., which were manufacturing CFCs, were given special grant to look, look after substitutes for CFCs so that the losers, potential losers could be beneficiaries of some other program. Also, when you have defined the electric mobility piece widely, 
as a low emission piece then plug in hybrids hybrids even biofuel cars etc come in that is also uh, 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 that is also a way of uh, of making it a greater and more level playing field and lastly what you said regarding um, uh, regarding these 30 million people may lose their jobs the mechanics etc uh, a similar fear was expressed when maruti came i remember when maruti came people said that this car will not require mechanics so ambassador and fiat requires a lot of mechanics so what will happen to the mechanics i am sure some of them had to change and upgrade but the parking attendant population grew and the revenues from there also grew people uh, and several other sectors boomed so just as uh, navin said earlier regarding the fact that if one sector will subdue others will emerge uh, and on that note let me come back to him and ask him what he thinks about the recycling and the reverse logistics piece uh, navin which uh, which anil ji had uh, uh, just referred to pavan what's going to happen is there is going to be a multitude of new industries which come in and which didn't which don't exist in india at this point of time you know when we look at i've spoken about some of them now recycling is another very important factor now so far we have recycling that's happening of batteries and collection of batteries from phones and computers etc but the volumes have not been large enough for complete recycling plants here for lithium recycling so what's going to happen is that when we look at recycling and i'm specifically talking about the batteries here now when you look at the lithium ion batteries for example and they go in for a recycling plant first uh, recycling is still very far away because what they would do is from automotive they would be refurbished and go into stationary applications all our upss and all our inverters and even energy storage at the grid level where you're storing the energy from maybe solar or from the renewable sources those would be stored using lithium ion batteries and those batteries after they've done with that business after they're done with that work they would then go in for recycling so there is going to be a substantial amount of recycling need recycling need but that's still a while away we need to start setting up now in order to get ready for the what's going to happen later and even then what would happen is unlike something like a lead acid battery where there are chemicals which are thrown into the ground or uh, by the irresponsible in some of the irresponsible recyclers in this case what would happen is that the metals that get extracted from here because they're so expensive they would get extracted and then be reused into batteries again and they would go into different forms of batteries for different applications so recycling is going to be a very substantial uh, industry to play going forward now in terms of the reverse logistics when we're talking about you know vehicles going out and then material coming back in here what happens is it's a very integrated grid system you're not going to a uh, unlike a ic engine where you have to actually go to a fuel pump to actually tank up on your fuel and then you go to a service station etc in this case in electric what would happen is that you are very well just charging your vehicles at home or at your workplace or wherever you're going and that's more for top up but you don't necessarily need to go to uh, either a charging station or you don't need to go to a petrol pump or something on those lines going forward so there is going to be a dramatic shift that happens also the vehicles which are going out the logistic the companies which are taking the vehicles out would be bringing back because what happens is like in in our case for example any battery that we sell as a, a replacement battery we take the old one back because that old one back has to go in for a recycling or for refurbishment and then it goes into different applications so there are going to be recycling is going to be a very important factor when we go along and it's not just for automotive but those batteries are going to be also for the coming in from the consumer sectors whether it's uh, mobile phones or or other devices great points great points navin i am reminded of what margaret margaret thatcher said uh, that if the goods are quality the goods uh, the customer will come back and if the goods are poor quality then the goods will come back she must have never imagined that reverse logistics will be such a big system that even when the goods are poor quality when they exhaust they will come back for recycling and a big industry around recycling and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, reverse logistics will emerge superb points i will have to come to the questions now because 
they are just pouring in. And uh, I would like to start with, uh, um, I would like to start with Mahesh Babu. Mahesh, uh, this question is from Sanjay Goha. He's the Vice President Tata Oil India for Strategy and Development. Do we see downsizing of auto ancillary industry, especially for common component manufacturers that are close to ICE core body? Mahesh. Yeah, see, there are two things happening. Uh, um, uh, one is uh, there is a new technology of EV which is coming in and it's leaving a new industry uh, uh, to flourish. The second one is a consolidation of existing industry to get into economics. I think both are good for the industry and that's what is happening in IC engine. For example, two years back before the COVID, I went to a Fr France where a complete piston plant is piston plant is converted into a battery plant. Now what happened, all these guys who were working on the piston plant did not do a lose a job. Those guys have been reskilled to build the battery packs. Now, similarly, when I went to Korea, uh, guys who were doing uh, substantially, uh, what I would say structural design of vehicle uh, moved to the designing structural design of battery packs and motors and things like that. So I strongly believe fundamental engineering is being applied in multi many areas and these are the needs which will continue to happen. Uh, and hence, there will be a tectonic shift between the skill levels business model and what it is happening. Now, having said that, if I, if I if you ask me, do somebody go and invest in IC engine today for expansion? I doubt. I doubt anybody will go and invest in innovation of IC engine or expansion today in automobile use, maybe in stationary use and maybe in trucks and buses, it may be still there. But I don't think after Euro 6 and Euro 6B, anybody will hugely invest uh, in IC engine, I have been already hearing talks that they should consolidate. Why we should make everything? Why can't we give it to somebody who will make in large scale and get economics and get that done? So the life cycle and maturity cycle on the S curve of uh, innovation, IC engine is in a different stage and uh, let's say uh, EV is in an early stage. So both are in a different stage. I'm sure EV will come to the S curve one day. Uh, in, a, in a very mature stage and then some other thing will take over. But in EV, there are many things which are integrated unless IC engine. You have energy storage. You have uh, what I would say grid stabilization. You have uh, uh, a lot of things can be done in EV not which cannot be compensated by IC. When, when India is talking about energy, through renewables, energy, two things. Just think about 100,000 cars with uh, 50 kilowatt hour battery standing idle during peak time. Uh, and uh, it will create an industry by itself. You will have uh, V2G and uh, G2V. And there will be a new industry coming in around that area. Many of the uh, people who are doing, uh, let's say, dealerships, when you are doing, doing something else, can get into the new industry charging industry will flourish. So the question is, will the investment go into new technology? Of course, yes. Uh, will the innovation fade out in IC engine? I don't think so because the innovation will be in a different form. It will be in a business model. It will be in a consolidated position. Innovation will flourish everywhere. But there is a clear need for reinvention and redistribution of our resources and skills to get what the tectonic shift is happening and we should be aware of it and we should embrace it because it's good for the consumers, it's good for the industry and it's good for the country. Let's say uh, Volkswagen, everybody would have seen what they are talking about. They are talking about 240 gigawatt hour of battery plant uh, in next five to 10 years time. If 240 gigawatt of our battery plant is there, the same Volkswagen was talking like 50 years back of setting up a diesel plant throughout. So there is going to be a huge opportunity in batteries. There is going to be a huge consolidation in IC engines. Uh, so we'll have to look at that way uh, when we are looking at business on either side. And both have an opportunity. Both have an opportunity uh, uh, to grow. One is for scaling up, another is for consolidation. Excellent, excellent points. Uh, uh, you're very well balanced it and you've alluded to, to a study which I was uh, going through 
that the positives, uh, positive impact of, of manufacturing will be on motors, microprocessors, controllers, or inverters, that this uh, subsector will boom. Neutral on steering systems, seats, shock absorbers, leaf springs, and headlights. And negative on engine parts, clutch, radiators, gears, and pistons. And I'm glad that you mentioned pistons. And you mentioned pistons from uh, 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 this uh, adaptation of a piston factory to a battery factory from France, which is where the question was coming from because it came from the vice president of Total, which is also uh, an energy uh, uh, big company in energy from uh, France. So great points on that. Let me come to the next question and that is to, that is to Amit. And uh, this is Sandeep Goswami. He's the uh, CEO of uh, Sandeep Goswami Associates. Uh, do we have a date by when all vehicles in India would be changed to EV? This has been a very controversial uh, date in the past. Uh, but the question is something else. Uh, he's leading somewhere else. He asks, while it would reduce pollution, the chances of accidents would increase more so in cities because EVs are silent and we in India have zero traffic sense. And those who haven't done, uh, uh, those who have don't get footpaths to walk on, how would these be addressed? Is low noise a safety hazard, Amit? I actually don't agree with this point and maybe there's a sense of pessimism. Uh, my word view is a little bit different. Let's, let me talk about the infrastructure part. I think I'm doing a great job in terms of urban infrastructure. Look at the smart city program, which was which was not existing, at least in my country. Uh, from almost 20 cities, now they're covering 100 cities. Yes, there are only two pin codes in these cities which are being transformed, but it's a matter of time. With the autonomy they have been given to raise more money, and maybe next five to 10 years, we will actually have a very world-class footpath and also maybe the dedicated bike lanes, uh, particularly, which is important for sustainable mobility. And I'm seeing that happening. The second thing which is happening in the, in the context of urban mobility is the metro system. 25 metro systems are right now in works, even in small cities where, like say, I grew up Kanpur, and I was chatting with my cousin. He was like saying that the work is happening at a super fast pace. And even fast forward that in four to five years from now, we will have at least the major towns with metro service or BRTS. We did not have all of that. And footpath also will happen. It's actually, yes, there are certain nexus which we have to solve for where they make it and then someone will dig it. Uh, and thanks to the modernization across fiber line connectivity and, and whatnot. So probably we need to take some leaf uh, from someone else's playbook so that we do not have to dig these roads or footpath. But otherwise, in general, the infrastructure has been improving. Now the point around the noise, I think, uh, yes, I agree, there's a fear of you being knocked out. But at the same time, imagine the type of noise we hear and the impact, the indirect impact on our health, just like air pollution it is speaking to all of us. It's not good. We have been losing our ability to hear. We have been getting this constant noise, <clears throat> which is also dis disturbing our mental balance in some shape or form. And if someone is, uh, and it's just a matter of time, you know, we, when we all go out of India, no one is putting honk. I remember my first trip outside of India, I was surprised that why the hell they're not honking when they are taking turn or when they're overtaking. And after maybe a couple of days time, I was into that. I was like, yeah, this is how the mobility has to be. And same thing here, where uh, we will be used to look at our rear view mirror while taking a turn and, and we will follow the direction when the expectation is that no one's gonna create any noise. So I think we'll be marching towards a better future and not the worst one because of the mobility becoming cleaner and, and, and more silent. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you are right that the electric vehicle has less noise than uh, the ICE vehicle, but what stops us from honking? 
so <laughs> the horn doesn't have less noise so but of course this question i'm sure was asked in a little humorous vein and um, uh, but on a, on another issue this noise is also going to uh, affect somewhere customer acceptance of it as a robust vehicle uh, many studies have happened where uh, people assess the quality of a vehicle by how the door closes and if the door closes with ponderous finality then they think it's a great car but if it is a little rickety close or not that definite a close uh, so i feel on this also uh, actually uh, there are studies happening in this area as to how we can make electric vehicle uh, an heirloom kind of a product where they are saying that your uh, wrist watch mechanical wrist watch used to pass from generation to generation as an heirloom but your electronic watch is not going to have the same fate even if it has that much durability so somewhere we have to uh, surely look at that and i am sure ami mahil babu and others are doing it i am conscious of the time we have all we are already 10 minutes beyond the uh, uh, the time committed but the uh, really thank all the uh, all the informed audience the other questions also we'll post to the uh, to the panel and hope to come back to you with the answers but let me just ask the last question to uh, to navin which is very pertinent in terms of acceptance of the power trains how's the acceptance from of indigenously made power trains uh, Uh, in india among the uh, among the manufacturers navin see when you look at uh, okay so the indigenous power trains are improving dramatically there is a lot of improvement which is happening so what used to happen is still a few years back there was a lot of fence sitting happening by companies who were the tier 1 tier 2 suppliers of the ic engine companies now these companies simply because the fence sitting was there because they wanted to come in but the volumes of the sector were so small that it didn't make sense for them economical sense of commercial sense for them to really jump in that has now changed in the last couple of years so now better and better companies are now stepping in they are making investments into this category because the writing is clear on the wall it's a matter of whether it's going to take 5 years or 6 years or 7 years so it's not going to be a dramatically long time for that disruption to happen simply because the tco of electric vehicles has come down is down the initial purchase price has come down substantially the experience is better so from every which way it is actually in that sense probably reached it's a, a, a stage where it can begin to cause that disruption now the drive trains in india when we look at it from a localized standpoint are not really different from any drive trains that we would get outside the issue that remains is the volumes that we get outside are so large that the amortization of cost is over a much larger volume in india it's over a smaller volume thereby making your vehicle or making the drive trains more expensive that's the only difference so in terms of quality we are nowhere uh, sacrificing or compromising simply because it's drive trains but when you look at things like batteries for example we still don't have battery manufacturing here in the true sense we have a lot of assembly which is happening now but we still don't have battery manufacturing in that true sense and that i'm hoping is going to come in in the very very near future i know of a few plants which are on the verge of uh, announcing that they're going to be jumping in to this category so localization is going to be a very important factor and we are moving in that direction already there's this centers of excellence in the vehicles coming in so when you look at the mechanical part of it very common to what ic engine has it's just a different volume that we have at this point of time and maybe light weighting etc the difference lies in your drive train which is here elect more electrical rather than more mechanical there and that is where changes are happening and that's where there's a lot of opportunities also for entrepreneurs to come in great point scale as well as well as backward integration is what you are speaking and i would also request this informed audience which has asked such fine questions to look at the earlier blue circle webinars in the uh, in the electric vehicle and energy storage space many of the questions are answered there where such topics where those topics have been taken up uh, also there are other points for nishant who uh, we, i'm sure uh, siddharth will bring to him uh, 
very fine panelist, enlightened panelist. I'll pass it back 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 to uh, Siddharth. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, sirs. Such an insightful discussion, and how well moderated, Pavan sir. Uh, we're absolutely bullish about the growth in the EV space, and look up to you all to show us the way forward. Uh, and thank you to our distinguished audience for joining us, for sharing such excellent questions. Uh, we've received over 450 registrations, most of you who are COC, XOs, and senior leaders. Uh, many are members and also repeat visitors to our webinars. Uh, uh, in addition to this, uh, uh, to our frequently uh, curated discussions across our core communities, uh, which are e-mobility, energy, real estate, and healthcare, we're also adding two new communities, which are uh, retail logistics and defense and aerospace. And uh, soon you'll be happy to know that we will be launching an exclusive digital platform curated for senior leaders, somewhat like a sector specific LinkedIn for leaders, where we will present them with the opportunity of connecting with people just like them, also house highly quality curated content, have such meaningful conversations and also give access to leaders uh, on, on business opportunities across these four sectors. Uh, so those leaders who are interested, please do write to us. We've also begun our selective outreach for membership and have close to 3000 leaders who've already signed up in the last two to three months. So thank you very much once again. It's been an absolute privilege and look forward to having such discussions in the future. Thank you very much everybody. Really thank you. Thank you all.